Hey guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at a fast cross-platform and open source manga, comic, and book server called Kavita. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Linode. I've been partnered with Linode for quite a while now because it's a great place to host just about anything you could want to host. Need a dedicated space to host an app? Linode has you covered with more than 100 pre-built apps that can be installed with just a couple of clicks. Want to develop an app on your favorite flavor of Linux? Linode has you covered there too, with more than 30 different options to start with. Need to do some pen testing on your own network or app? Install a Kali Linux setup in just a few clicks to get started with testing your own security. You can also host a Docker setup, a Kubernetes cluster, and more with just a few clicks. From hosting a single website to complex multi-cloud deployments, find enterprise level capabilities like object storage, Kubernetes, and GPUs at a 30 to 50% lower cost than the major cloud providers. Be sure to check out the link in the video description to get $100 in free credit for 60 days to see what you can do with Linode. If we take a look at Kavita's website, we can see that it supports manga, comics, and eBooks. It has a search feature and supports fields from comicinfo.xml to provide filtering on metadata. You can manage your users and your library from anywhere, as long as you have this set up for remote access via your favorite reverse proxy, of course. And Kavita has a built-in manga comic image reader with caching, so you should never feel loading times when you're reading. There is a bunch more information about Kavita on the website, including a link to a demo server that they have set up. So be sure to check out the link in the description for more information on that. If we head over to the installation guides on their wiki, we can see that there are multiple ways to install this. And of course, we're gonna take a look at installing this via Docker. On the Docker page, they have a Docker CLI command that you can run, or you can use the Docker Compose that we're going to take a look at. We've got a version 3.9 Docker Compose with the service Kavita listed, and we're going to use the latest Kavita image from Docker, and the container will be named Kavita. Now, I wanna make note that this image will support x86 processors as well as ARM processors, and you can see that over on their hub.docker.com page. Below that, we have some volumes. Manga, comics, and books are all optional, and you can name them whatever you'd like as long as you map them to the appropriate places where your reading library will be located. For the sake of this demonstration though, I'm just going to be using an ebook library that I have set up on this server. The last volume is a bit different as it is not optional. On the left, you'll want to map a location where your Kavita configuration files will be stored. Uh, make sure though you don't mess with anything on the right side of the colon. I mean, basically anywhere in a Docker Compose. Next, you'll wanna be sure to set your time zone for your locale. And lastly, the ports are set to 5,000 on each side of the colon. So again, be sure to only change the left side of that if you need to change from 5,000 to something else and don't change the 5,000 on the right side of the colon. Once you have your Docker Compose configured the way you need it for your setup, you can deploy the container via command line or as I'm going to do in Portainer. You'll wanna give the container a few moments to come up and once it's showing that it's running or healthy, you can head over to the IP address and the port of the container on your Docker server. The first time you attempt to log in, you'll be asked to create an admin account. So go ahead and register that account and then log in. There won't be anything on the homepage the first time you log in. So you wanna go over and click the server settings at the top center of the page. Then we can click on the add library button. You can give your new library a name and a type and then click next. Now you'll want to click on the browse for media folders button. And chances are that you'll just want to click the folder with the slash in it to find your mapped library files. Now I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom where I'll find the books library that I had mapped in my Docker Compose. Uh, then I'll click share. Now I'll click the next button and you can upload a cover to this if you'd like, but it's completely optional. Um, you can click next and then click save. At this point, I recommend scanning your libraries with the two arrows and a circle button. You'll notice a pop-up saying that a scan has been started and the activity icon at the top of the screen may flash just a little bit. At this point, if we go back to the homepage of Kavita, we should be able to see our books start to populate on the page. But let's go back to our admin dashboard just to see what's in there. Under the general tab, we can set the URL of the application if we're using a reverse proxy. And we can also change things up like the number of days for backups as well as for logs. Under the users tab, you can invite users, but you will wanna make sure to have your app on a domain for that to work properly. The library tab allows us to add more libraries as necessary and even edit or delete existing libraries. 
The media tab allows us to decide how we want to save bookmarks and covers. And there is an email tab that we can use to change the email services URL if you want to use the built-in delivery service. If you'd like to use your own SMTP server, you can install a separate Kavita email Docker container. And I will have links to that in the description down below if you'd like to check that out. In the tasks tab, you can see the ad hoc tasks that you might need to manually run for any uh, given reason. And there are also recurring tasks that are handled by cron jobs that you can see. The statistics and systems tabs both have information that you might want to take a look at for your specific setup. If we go to the top right of the page and click our username, we can then click the settings link below that to get to our account settings. The account tab lets us change our email and password, which is simple enough. The preferences tab lets us change a few user interface options for our own liking. There is an API key and an OPDS URL under the third party clients tab. And if you've got multiple themes installed, you can switch between them by going over to the themes tab. The devices and stats tabs are just that, they're information about your devices and stats. Now that we've taken a look at the different settings, let's head back over to our homepage where we should be able to start seeing our library at this point. You can use the menu on the left side to navigate uh, throughout the front end of the website, and you can start clicking the books you want to read in the main section of the right side of the page. When you open a book, you'll get the title, cover, rating, if there is one, as well as the author, language, format, length, and estimated time to read the book. When you click the read button, you'll be taken into the book and will have the option to select things like font, font size, letter spacing, and margins. After that, you can just start reading the book either on your PC, tablet, phone, or whatever you'd like to use to read your collection. And whatever page you stop reading on will be stored so that you can come back later and pick up right where you left off. So that's how easy it is to get Kavita installed using Docker and get your ePublication libraries imported into it. Let me know in the comment section down below if this is an ebook reader that you would use. I know we've looked at a few different ones over the last couple of years, and I'd love to get your opinion specifically on Kavita, whether again, you would use this or you've got something else that you prefer to use. But with that said, I am gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I do wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.